Hello friends, I am Vinay Mote, nature and wildlife photographer and today I am going to talk about camera modes and I will also explain which modes to use depending on which scenario you are photographing. Let me give you one real life example which will help you to understand different modes. So let's take an example of car. I hope that everyone drives the car or knows how car driving works. In old days, car used to be all manual where you need to change the gears yourself by using clutch press the clutch change the gears and accelerate and then car will move on so that's a full manual cars eventually the technology in mechanical field advances and they came up with the auto cars so auto cars means you just need to accelerate brake and you just use steering to control where the car is going you don't need to worry about changing gears car will change the gears on its own so this version of car is basically semi-automatic it's not really fully automatic because you still need control steering brakes and accelerator so this is uh, the second kind of types of cars you can think of then the third car which we haven't got it yet fully automatic car which is google car uh, so you just set the start point and destination uh, and then car will drive on its own everything car will do everything for you and you don't need to worry about it, anything so you don't have control of how much acceleration you need um, and where you want to stop in between you don't have that control so that's a fully automatic car so something similar happens in camera as well so camera has got also fully automatic mode in semi-automatic and fully manual mode as well in this slide i'll try to explain one by one so according to all user needs manufacturer designed camera modes mainly in three different category one is fully automatic mode second is semi-automatic and third is fully manual mode so in automatic modes camera calculates everything and sets camera as per desired scene you just need to select scene Mostly point and shoot and other cameras got all these different different scenes and then camera selects all the settings for you. You don't need to do anything. You just need to concentrate on getting the photo. In SLR you got the auto mode as well. Camera calculates all parameters and simply user just clicks and or takes the photo. Example of one of the scene we can choose is portrait mode. This is a very common mode and you will find it in most of the cameras. So in this mode, camera basically says the parameters to get the sharp subject against the blurred background. So camera basically sets aperture to wide open so that you get minimum depth of field. And also camera assumes that you need little bit extra lights. That's why it turns on the flash. So in case the subject is in shadow or in dark light, then the face will be lit and you will get the photo. On the second common mode, all these cameras have is landscape mode where camera sets the parameter to get sharp focus from near object to the far object so basically camera is trying to achieve maximum depth of field and also as it assumes that you are in outside you're in the nature so it does turn off the your flash so you don't need really flash when you are shooting landscape mode now the third common scene is sport mode in sports mode camera assumes that you want to freeze the action and you want to get the every moment of moving objects sharp that's what camera thinks and camera sets the shutter speed to the maximum possible so that you won't get blurry images in this mode camera may bump up iso if you are shooting in a low light so whenever someone is migrating from small cameras to dslrs or cameras which allows more setting changes it's a user's mentality that they want to still have the click and grab approach that's why these modes are there so that their transition can be smooth and as they explore the photography they will explore the semi-manual modes and at the end they will explore the manual modes as well next types of modes is semi-manual modes in semi-manual mode camera basically selects few settings and user sets few settings so it works out like user first needs to set few settings and then rest of the setting will be calculated and set by camera. So all these semi or full manual modes are used by professionals. Professionals don't always go for manual mode. They choose between semi manual 
or full manual mode depending on the situation so first semi manual mode where user is gonna set shutter speed or a pressure and then camera calculates other parts like iso and other stuff depending on the metering mode you have selected if you choose the full manual mode then user is gonna set everything and camera will not calculate uh, anything so that's the difference between semi manual and full manual mode so in semi manual mode iso could be set by user or it can be set to ato as well so if you set it to ato obviously camera is gonna decide what iso it needs depending on the different other settings first mode we talk about is shutter speed priority so it's called as time value tv or in some cases it's called as s s is for shutter speed so in this mode user basically sets the shutter speed and camera will calculate aperture required obviously iso could be set by user or it could be ato as well in this um, mode basically we are saying to camera this is the exact shutter speed i need and rest of the stuff you do calculate it now the next mode we talk about is aperture priority mode or av mode in this case user sets the aperture and camera will calculate its shutter speed so those are the main two semi manual modes and then we come to the full manual mode where it gives user full control of or how you want to set your camera so in this mode user going to select all these three iso shutter speed and aperture camera is not going to interfere in between and camera is going to capture the moment as you said so if there is a less light coming as a result of your setting then your photos will end up as a dark if as a result of this setting more light coming in then you will end up with the very bright photos or overexposed photos all right so i hope you understood basics of camera modes and i hope you will be able to select right mode according to the scene which you gonna photograph if you like this video you can subscribe here or you can register on my website vinaymurthy.com thanks for watching